We, we rightly have, we already have our, our guest and she's here, she's back on. Good morning, man. Welcome to the show, ma. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, ma. It's good to have you. It's good to have you, ma. Okay. Yeah, likewise. Okay, ma. But I wanted to find out, what are the things to, we're looking at relationship because we know that everywhere we go to around the world, we have to relate with people, both on the home front, the work front, in church, and social places. What are the basic things that one has to do to look out in sustaining relationship? Okay, um, thank you so much for this opportunity. Firstly, I really long to say an immense um, thank you to our man of God for the work our pastor is doing all over the whole world. And I also want to say very big thank you to my pastor, Pastor Frank Ovokere. And I also want to say thank you to your team. You're doing immense good work. Thank you. Okay, one of the essentials to look out for in a healthy relationship, the list is actually endless. But firstly, the first thing is we have to be, um, we are all purpose driven. Mm. Anything we're doing basically in life, it's purpose. There's something we want to achieve. So the first question is what's the purpose? What's, what's you know, what's. Um, what is it that you want to achieve in this setting relationship? So what's the objective of that relationship? And now there are, like I said, there are endless. There are several things you, you watch out for. There are several things you watch out for. But there are some common tips that underline several kinds of relationship. Any kind of relationship you want to um, be in, there are several factors. And one of them on my list, the first and key is effective communication. Effective. Yes, effective communication is one key thing. Now, I am not saying just communication, because we can be communicating, mm -hmm. but the communication, the communi uh, communication is not effective. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the first key thing is effective communication. Because I have observed that when there is no effective communication, a lot of things happen. Yeah. A lot of assumptions happen, mm. and you um, place yourself in um, in a dilemma where the devil could talk to you. Why? Mm. Because you don't have sufficient information. Remember what the Bible says that we people suffer. We suffer. The children of God suffer because of lack of knowledge. And what's mm. lack of knowledge? Lack of information. Mm. Yeah. And where do we get information from the Bible? So because of lack of um, um, an effective communication is one thing, one mm. essential thing that um, lubricates a healthy relationship. Yes. Now, the other one is understanding. Understanding is very key. Yeah. Understanding your strengths, understanding your seemingly weaknesses. So, um, um, and one other factors that affect is complementing ourselves. Mm -hmm. So when you know probably um, this person in a relationship, the second person in the relationship has the personality of always talking. So rather, maybe the person talks a lot. Now, rather than trying to, you know, keep complaining or quarreling about you talk too much and you know I don't like too much, you know, words, talk little. That would be futile. Mm. So the understanding in such a relationship is, first of all, you understand that this person talks a lot. This is this. Mm. This is the person's personality. Yes. Mm. So you don't try to change the person. Not even at adult, at adult um, stage. Mm. Because at adult age, most personalities are being consolidated and the only thing that can change a man at that stage is the word of god yes mm. so what you do is if you just compliment yourself you understand that okay this is the person the person has to talk so when the person is talking you listen mm. rather than yelling and trying to stop the person you just listen so understanding now i just you know brought out that analogy um to expand more on understanding so the first thing is effective communication. Understanding is very key. Very, very key. Yeah. Now, the next thing we could also look out for is trust. You know, there's something I learned from my um, esteemed pastor, the esteemed pastor, Go Walker. She said, and it's, it's, it's been helping me in my marital relationship. Yeah. She said, um, trust, that people don't really have to end trust. You just give it to them as a gift. Mm. Yes. And I remember during the anniversary of um, our pastors, um, I went to them under their, you know, 
they are to sit at their foot to receive some wisdom because they were celebrating their 20 years you know a wedding anniversary and meaning they definitely have so much that one has to learn from and i i remember the same pastor frank say something that he is he has where he's coming from you know he has a place where he's coming from but one um, thing that the esteemed Pastor God did that helped him, you know, is Pastor God trusted him, even when he should not be trusted. Hmm. And he said in his words, he said, this helped him to shape the things he, he does. So probably he was, uh, maybe if he's about to do something otherwise, but just the thoughts of the father, your wife, my wife trusts me has a way of stopping him from doing that thing and he gets to do the right thing. So you give people trust as a gift and not necessarily because they earn it. And it has helped me so far in my in my marriage. So effective communication, very key. That's the top most on the list. Yeah. Effective communication. Because with effective communication, there's a lot of um, misunderstanding that would be perverted, that would be um, stopped. Um. Then the next thing is understanding. The next is trust, then transparency. That's honesty. Being honest. One of the things I, as an individual, don't um, can tolerate is um, trying to be sneaky, not being honest. Okay. So when you're being honest, there's something that, you know, another thing is love, then respect. So we have effective communication, we have understanding, we have trust, we have honesty, we have love. And we have respect. Okay, ma. Ma, please, uh, before, before my other guests, before my other pilots are going to be joining, I want to ask a question too. In the workplace, okay. talking about the workplace and the workspace, how do you handle, how do you handle the relationship in the workplace? Knowing that sometimes there are toxic relationships or persons are very, like we we'll say, in court, hot-blooded. How do you do that? How do you handle it? Knowing also that the Bible says we should pursue peace with all men. Okay, now, um, basically, in the, I happen to, you know, head um, a school, I'm the head of administration in the school, and um, we are all in a work environment. Something that brings people together in, in a working relationship is a common objective, a common objective of the organization. And that's actually what propels our behaviors and actions. Now, um, your focal point, what should actually be in the mind of everybody working in that relationship is the achieving the set objectives. Hmm. Achieving the set objectives. Now, in achieving the set objectives, we could work in different units and different departments, and definitely you're working with people. Now, as a boss, that's talking about the boss um, um, and your, probably the people you're working with, Understanding comes into play. You get to understand each of your staff individually. Understanding their strengths. You know, probably you want to execute a project. There is a, um, you have a particular one that can start up, that knows how to start a project, but may not know how to continue. Then you have the type that does not know how to start, but know how to continue. You have, you have some other ones that have strength of starting and continuing, but they don't know how to finish a relationship. Now, you as a boss, you need to understand the individuality of this, um, you know, of your workers. Now, yeah. managing it together, managing all of it together, it's also key. Because one of the things that causes um, a misunderstanding in the relationship, it's sometimes it comes from the boss. Maybe when the boss is trying to talk down, your words trying to uh, motivate your staff, you try to motivate your staff. A, a motivated staff would definitely um, exhibit some kind of um, ill behaviors most times in work in workplaces. Okay. So if you're able to manage them with their different individuality, understanding their different individuality, and getting the best from them will also help them. Now you spoke about um, working with a hot tempered person. Yeah. Now definitely, what makes what aggravates such a person maybe maybe um the person does not like to be spoken to in a particular way okay yeah maybe the person does not like to be spoken to in a particular way you understand that because i have you know i have a secretary in my organization if you want to get the best out of this lady you don't talk her down even when she's seemingly not doing the work 
the best way to get the, 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 the way to get the best thing out of her is by encouraging her okay. and showing her love. When you show her love, you get the best. She would walk at her peak. Mm. So such a person, know, understanding the person, if you talk the person down, what you do is just the very person and, and lady I'm talking about, once you start talking her down, the first, next thing, the, her reaction is you see her, she withdraws, she withdraws to herself and stay on her own. And she becomes less productive. Mm. Mm. Now you have the type that when you, when you probably, that don't, the person probably don't like to be embarrassed in the midst of others. When you do that, you see the person, the person that backs back or yell or yeah. display some kind of ill behaviors. Yeah. So what you what you do is you avoid talking to that kind of person because your objective as a boss is to achieve your organizational objective. Go so ahead. everything you have to put up to achieve your organizational objective, you've got to do it. Yes. Mm. Like I said, we are all purpose driven. Mm. Yeah. We do what we do because there is a purpose we want to achieve. There's something we want to achieve and that is what is key. Yes. Just like uh, in our ministry right now, our mandate is to reach and engage six billion people. Mm. So why want to, why want to engage in something less important? Mm. Yeah. What is important is how do we achieve this? How do we manage people? Mm. Because everybody is important. How do you manage them? Engage them. Understand their personality while you're trying to get them to overcome it. Yes. Mm. Or you manage their personality to achieve your musicians. Okay. Yeah, okay, your okay. organizational um, goals and objectives. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Maureen. Um, talking about siblings, um, you know, it is um, expected somehow that uh, maybe siblings should have a good, good relationship amongst one another. But you realize that some siblings are like, they are like cat and dog. <laughs> they are always at loggerheads with each other. So how can you resolve um, conflict among siblings together? Because um, sometimes it gets so bad that you can't even understand why they keep having these issues and their family, their blood re relatives, they are blood related. So normally you should have thought that they should have fantastic relationship, but they're having issues with one another. So what would you advise for such people that are in that position? Okay. Um, you know, one of the various types of relationships we have is that of the family. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're in the family, it's not, it's not by choice. You know, every other kind of friendship you make by choice. Okay. Yeah. That of the family, it's not by choice. Mm -hmm. And most times, um, when they are being given birth to, they have different personalities. Different personalities. Um, as a matter of fact, my spouse was actually telling me about um, one of his siblings. Whom, while they were growing up, because right now at adult age, is this kind of person that most times it may not want to share resources. You know, as a family, somehow your family, they are just the first person you run to when you need some kind of assistance. Mm -hmm. And he said he has a sibling, he has a, you know, a brother, who most times he has it, but would never bring, you know, want to share, want to um, join in contributing. And he, has, he went a long way to explain how these traits now he's a man, a full-blown man, married, you know, has a family. Now, he, he, he was explaining to me that this kind of traits has been, has been in him right from when they were, you know, when they were all um, at the child age stage, when they were all children. While probably their mom tells them, go and everybody go out to fetch water. You see him, he'll sneak into the room and waiting for others to go fetch water for him to use. <laughs> now, um, the way you handle things like this is, First of all, at the, at the young age, the children at the young age, a lot of things have been adjusted. You, the mother, you, the parents, you observe your different kids, your different children with their different personalities and, you know, characters. At that stage, you correct everything you need to correct using the word of God and sometimes using spam. Now, now let's assume they are now adults. How do you deal with this? Is that most times, Sometimes you don't have them staying in the same geographical region. Maybe you have this person staying in this state, this other person staying in that state, and maybe there's a project to organize and you have to come together, you know, to make decisions and all that. And you have just this temperamental person that is never cooperative. Now, um, one key thing I know works is understanding the person. You see where that understanding comes into play? Yes. Understanding the person and managing the personality of the present.